Hello everyone, we are on chapter 5 of Philosophy of Freedom, and I'm going to just get started on paragraph 20. In thinking we have that element given us which wields our separate individuality into one whole with the cosmos, insofar as we sense and feel and also perceive, we are single beings. Insofar as we think, we are, all, we are the all one being that pervades everything. This is the deeper meaning of our two-sided nature. We see coming into being in us a force complete and absolute in itself, a force which is universal, but which we learn to know not as it issues from the center of the world, but rather at a point in the periphery. Were we to know it at its source, we would understand the whole riddle of the universe the moment we become conscious. But since we stand at a point in the periphery and find that our own existence is bounded by definite limits, we must explore the region which lies outside our own being with the help of thinking, which projects into us from the universal world existence. And we have summarized for 20 as follows. Actually, we have three summaries. Uh, the first one is, thinking unites us with the universe, whereas sensing, feeling, and perceiving separates us. And this is the deeper basis of our dual nature. The second summary we had was, we explore that which lies beyond our space on the periphery of world knowledge with the help of thinking that extends into us from that realm, the cosmos. And the third summary that we had was, we see coming into being in us a force complete and absolute in itself, a force which is universal, but which we learn to know, not as it issues from the center of the world, but rather at a point in the periphery. So this paragraph is basically talking about how um, we are dual beings, who have these two aspects and the, the sensing and our feeling makes us feel very separate and individual and it's the thinking part of our nature that makes us connected to everything so we have these two streams the thinking here that makes us feel united with everything and then we have the the feeling and the sensing here which makes us feel separate and individual and What else does he say? So this is a very complete and absolute force in itself. And um, I'm going to move on. I think that paragraph was pretty self-explanatory there. Um, I'm going to move on to 21. Through the fact that the thinking in us reaches out beyond our separate existence and relates itself to the universal world existence gives rise to the fundamental desire for knowledge in us. Beings without thinking do not have this desire. When they are faced with other things, no questions arise for them. These other things remain external to such beings. But in thinking beings, the concept rises up when they confront the external thing. It is that part of the thing which we receive, not from outside, but from within. To match up, to unite the two elements, inner and outer, is the task of knowledge. The summary for 21 is... We thirst for knowledge because thinking reaches out beyond our separateness to unite us with the universe. We receive concepts internally as we encounter the external world, and the task of knowledge is to unite the inner and outer elements of the thing. So again, um, he points out that the task of knowledge is to unite these inner elements, which is the inner, which is concepts and thinking, and the outer, which is the objects or people, whatever we encounter that's outside of us. Um, any sense, percepts, sense objects and whatnot. Um, and what kindles our desire for knowledge is because we are the dual beings with the thinking and the feeling and the sense being able to sense things because we have this if we didn't have thinking we wouldn't have this desire to learn more because we would just be content in our own little individual feeling world and sense world but because we have this dual nature of thinking 
and the feeling and the sensing, as I said earlier, um, it makes us want to come out from within, and um, that's that's where the the striving comes from. Um, and again, he says here, beings who do not think have this desire, and you can see that, I guess, um, if you look at the animal kingdom, I mean, we don't really see animals desiring knowledge. Um, I don't really want to go into that too much about what animals perceive and think and all that stuff, but I mean, I think most people would agree that they don't really think the same way we do, and they don't have that same fundamental desire for knowledge that we humans do because I mean look what humans have done as a result of desiring knowledge I mean we've created a lot of different things you know we've created technology we've created all this philosophy books back in 2000 years ago or whatever like you can you know you see people being creative I mean you don't see that in animals because, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying a risky statement here, but I mean, I don't think animals have the same thinking capacity we do, and that's why they don't have that same desire for knowledge that we do. I mean, you don't see animals in the forest being, you know, struggling with, you know, why am I here? You don't see them doing that. They're not really, they're just there, and they're, you know, I mean, I'm not dismissing animals and what, you know, they have feelings too, I guess, but I mean, they're not the same as we humans are. So I'm going to move on to 22 and I'll stop that there because 23 is really long. So 22, and the percept is thus not something finished and self-contained, but one side of the total reality. The other side is the concept. The act of knowing is the synthesis is the synthesis of percept and concept. Only percept and concept together constitute the whole thing. Cognition synthesizes percept and concept, creating total reality. Um, basically, when I was reading through this paragraph 22, the whole paragraph as itself is a very key paragraph because it basically summarizes this very important points. So, I mean, if you summarize this paragraph, the whole paragraph is 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 valuable. So, all the points that he makes, all f all five, s all four sentences, are very important. Um, um, the percept is not just one side. It's is not the whole thing. It's one side, and the other side is concept, as he's mentioned earlier. And so. Again, this whole book is about the theory of knowledge. So the act of knowing is this combination of percept and concept, which he has already mentioned earlier. And only those two things constitute the, uh, constitute the whole thing. So that's what we have to look for when we are um, trying to gather knowledge. We have to have the concept and the percept. We can't just have percepts. And we can't just have concepts. They go together like peanut butter and jam. So that's it for today. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.